Hello, my name is Paul Wilson from PR Wilson Media. A very warm welcome to Build. How to build a targeted audience on social media. As you can see from the graphic, this is the second part of a three-stage video training course. Configure, build and engage. Please go to our website at www.prwilsonmedia.com and there you'll find as you scroll down three steps to social media success. Please watch this video for a brief summary of what's included in the overall course. So build. I firmly believe that the build stage is the most important of the three stages covered by this training course. Yet, in my experience, it's also the most neglected. So many users tend to skip straight from stage one configure and go straight to stage three engage, effectively bypassing the entire build stage. They start tweeting, try a few posts on Facebook, but soon find that they're getting minimal responses. There are huge numbers of abandoned social media accounts out there where the users have quickly become disillusioned, regarding it as a waste of time and effort. So in this course I will demonstrate that by applying a few simple techniques it's really possible to proactively find and grow an audience and most importantly an audience that is relevant and interested in your content. There's no doubt in my mind that when it comes to reaching the biggest possible targeted audience in the most efficient way, there is no better social media platform than Twitter. It's the lists functionality available in Twitter that works just like a ready-made community directory. No matter what the subject, you can find numerous openly available lists which will help you zoom in on potential followers who share a common interest. So allow me to demonstrate how it works. So here we have an account that's fairly new, Grantham Links Swimming Club, currently only has 17 followers and is following 67 people. So we click on the profile or the underlined text that appears and you can see down the left hand side tweets following followers favorites and lists so let's click on lists and here if I scroll down you can see it's brought up two options subscribe to which is shown by default and member of let's start with subscribe to so subscribe to it includes both lists that the account has created itself so these two for example have the logo so they've been created by this account and as the subscribe to would suggest there are also lists that you have subscribed to and now appear on your own page so these are created by somebody else these accounts here and because they've subscribed to them and I'll show you how you do that you just go to the link and there it says unsubscribe list. So this is how it would look. You just simply click on subscribe. And as I say, that will mean it appears on your own list page. Let's just go back. So just to show you how you create a list, you can just click on create list here. And you can type in the name, description, and whether it's public or private. So the distinction there is that public, as it would suggest, anyone will see it. However, private, the lists that appear will only appear to you. So the two lists that I can see here, Media Local and Local Grantham, that have the padlock icon, they are private lists. And so nobody else would see them other than this account user. How do you add somebody to a list? OK, let's just take the Grantham Area Tweeps list here and see who appears. So let's look at Grantham Journal. Click on the account name and if you select in the drop down add or remove from lists. Then you can select which list to add it to if you've already got them created. I'll say media local. 
Okay, so we'll just return now to that list by clicking the back arrow. And we now look it has one member in it. And you can see the most recent posts here on the right hand side from that particular account. If we take a look at some of the other lists that we subscribe to, so the Grantham area tweeps, for example. The same principle applies. All the members, these 190, out of those, the ones that are most currently tweeted will be shown and how long ago they did, four minutes ago, 21 minutes ago, etc. So, th But this is a good filtered view of everybody really in the local Grantham area from this particular list. So if there was something of interest you wanted to share or retweet or even reply to the messages, this is a great way to do that without having to scroll through dozens and dozens of tweets from your main newsfeed. And remember, if this is a list that you've subscribed to, well, you don't have to follow individual people anyway. For example, if it's competitive services or products, you can just keep an eye on them and how they're doing without publicly, openly following the account. I'm just going back to Grantham Journal and how you would see anybody's lists out there. You just go to the account name and then you click on the link and this takes to the same view as seen tweets following followers favorites lists. We'll click on lists here. This is not untypical. In fact there's only one list that they've created themselves. In many cases there are no lists at all. Lists are actually a remarkably underused feature because most people think of lists and see it as something that requires extra work on your part to group and organize your own followers together. But as I'll now show you, the real power of lists comes when you use other people's public lists to target and build an audience. And the key is to look at what lists these accounts are a member of. So let's click on member of. The chances are that any account like this one, which has been active on Twitter for over a year, has lots of tweets, lots of followers, it will have been added to lots of very relevant lists. And this is the crux of the matter. Even if they haven't created or subscribed to any list, they will very likely be a member of. And let's say that we want to raise awareness with local media. We now want to see how many lists the Grantham Journal are a member of. We'll click Member of. Here it is. Let's just scroll down so you get the full effect of just how many lists there are out there. Picking out some as we go. Allington Links, all about Lincolnshire, Midlands News, Grantham Community, PR Press Contacts, local in and around Boston, Lincolnshire, local news, and on, and on, and on it goes. And varying numbers of members in those lists, but no doubt about it, some very, very relevant followers. It opens up. from this one relevant account potentially hundreds of connections. So let's just zone in on one particular list. Links, Media and Press. We click on that and then if we click here on Members they're all listed in sequence and any that we aren't already following I would suggest click Follow let's do that for all of these all the way down very straightforward process and there we are so in the build phase this is something you'd like to make as a routine really set aside 10 to 15 minutes a day go to one or two lists with perhaps 50 to 100 members and follow the members of those lists now, on average, roughly 20% will follow you back within two days. So, when you've followed 100, 
the chances are you'll get at least 20 following you back. And the key thing is that that 20 are very relevant followers who are very likely to be interested in what you're tweeting about because you've proactively identified them and found them through the lists. So whatever your interests, whether it be fish and chip shops to jewellery, there are always lists out there that you can use. Even if you can't find a specific follower who is perfectly relevant, you can search for one. In this case, it's Grantham Link Swimming Club, so if you search for Grantham Swimming, see what results it throws up. Grantham Swimming Club and there are also people results. If we look at people results as well as tweet results, you see the Grantham Swim Club. If I click on that, there's a very strong chance that these followers are going to be very relevant as well. And also if we look at lists, again as is common, they haven't subscribed or created any list but member of they're a member of at least two lists so you see the process working very well. Take one other subject business networking if I do a search for business networking Grantham for n Lincolnshire a total networking if I just click on this one click on again the text appears underlined this takes you to the same view and you say lists Okay, in this case, I've created one or two lists themselves and they've subscribed to some lists. So that in itself is quite useful information. And you can also then click on member of and there will be a member of even more lists that you can access. In the case of a swimming club, this would be very useful if you're looking for a business sponsor in the local area. You may be wondering how many lists you can create. Well, up until recently, each account could only create 20 lists with up to 500 members. As you can see here now, there's 598 in this particular one. Those restrictions have been removed since May of this year. And you can now create up to 1,000 lists and have up to 5,000 members in a list. So really, the possibilities are endless. Having said that, I'm certainly not suggesting that you spend all day finding lists and following members. Because for one thing, Twitter won't allow you to physically follow more than a thousand people a day. And they have algorithms that look out for aggressive following behavior patterns. But the main thing is, by doing it this way, you know that these followers are going to be relevant to you. What most new users aren't aware of is that there is in fact a strict following limit of 2,000. That means that you can only follow up to 2,000 Twitter accounts before you're prevented from following any more until at least that number, 2,000 or more, follow you back. To demonstrate this, I've logged in to another account that has reached that following limit. Global Run for Water as you can see, it's following 2001 and has 1737 followers. Just clicking on any of those followers and any that haven't followed. Like just for example, I'll just click on there now immediately. Here's a message. You are unable to follow more people at this time. Learn more here. Let me click on that link you're probably here to follow limit. So it's a technical limit as it explains in point one. Every account can follow 2,000 users total. And uh, it doesn't explain there but actually beyond the 2,000 limit once you've got that many followers you can go within 10 percent. So for example once you've got 2,000 followers you can follow as many as 2,200 without an issue. And it expands so if you've got 10,000 followers you can follow an extra 1,000 people so you could follow 11,000 but we're here we've hit the following limit so what can we do about it the good news is that there's a free and very easy to use software application called Contaxio 
which will help you get past this limit. There are many other similar tools out there. Just put in www.contacts.io, contacts with an X. But this is the one that I've found easiest to use. Okay, so we have the options down here. You can sign in with with Twitter or log in with Facebook. So let's sign in with Twitter. Okay, so the account Rotary Run for Water is already logged in. So if I click Authorize App, it's just a standard message. It won't be able to access direct messages or see your password. It's just to give it access to enable you to synchronize your Twitter account with the Contaxio records. So we'll just wait a moment for that to complete the login. So it's a tool not just for Twitter but even for Facebook and LinkedIn. A great way you can organize your social media accounts and also get reports and other details. But let's get on with the Twitter side of things. Twitter, Twitter manager. And then we see there the option synchronize or sync with Twitter. We've we'll select that and select full sync. It's important that the up-to-date information, obviously if you've only done this recently, it shouldn't take long to resynchronize. But let's go through the other four tabs here. Your followers, you follow, it's mutual, and everyone. So your followers is the happy situation where somebody's followed you but you haven't followed them back. So, in effect, you've got free followers in those cases. You can see the follow is greyed out and the follower is indicated there. But at this point, the main priority is to get rid of the 2000 limit. So we need to find people that we follow that aren't following back. This is you follow. If I scroll down here, you can see there are many more of these. It shows by default 20 in a view, multiple pages worth of these. So if you were to unfollow all of these, that account wouldn't necessarily be notified because they're not following you back so they wouldn't notice anything different but you still need to make a selection here as to which ones to unfollow so I'll explain that. For a start there are the two different views you can see for this information there's data view which has more detail you can also do actions like add things to lists and messages from here and then if you select table view it's much uh, closer together now, the information's compact and you can see it all easier in just the one view. And you can also select 20 or 50 shown on the one page at a time, so if you're going to do a number of these I would select 50 so you've got more opportunities to go through these. The next thing for the filters is sort. You can see the default there is it displays the latest to earliest follower. So the person you followed most recently, they're perhaps not the ones to unfollow because you have to give them a few days to make sure they want to follow you back. So I would click on the drop down box and select the opposite which is earliest to latest. This means that you followed these people some time ago and at this point they still haven't followed you back. And you would just go through, let's select the first 10 or so, 1, 2, 3, 4, so you can see it updates, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And if I now go back to the Twitter account, which you can find here, I'll just go back to the home page, you can see that we're now following 1991 so those 10 we've just unfollowed which means that if I wanted to follow somebody new now I could just follow a couple more there 
before we hit that limit again at 2001. Let's take another look at these sort options. Another one to look at is updates. Earliest to latest, latest to earliest. So earliest to latest means the last time that account tweeted, put a message out there. You can see straight away from this filter, here's an account 31st of August 2012, 31st of August 2012 and down and down. So all of these are very unlikely to be active on Twitter if they haven't actually put any messages out in all that time. It's no wonder they haven't followed you back. So you can comfortably unfollow them at this stage. Remember with any of these users you can always find them again with lists and follow them again in the future. This is really just a case of getting past that limitation of the 2000 barrier. I'll just show you two more sort options and that is followers most to least and least to most. What most to least will show you are the people that have the biggest audiences out there and these are generally in most cases either well-known public groups or celebrities and these are people who are probably less likely to follow you back because of this high number of followers they already have so you know you can select some of those to unfollow and in a similar way least to most followers this shows you some of the least active people on Twitter that haven't followed you back and if you unfollow those accounts you're not really losing much of a potential large audience anyway what I would suggest you don't do is to go to the its mutual tab where you followed them and they followed you back and start unfollowing individual accounts that's bad practice because they will detect using various software application programs or even visually that you've unfollowed them they may even prevent your account from following them in the future because of this deliberate tactical behavior it's not worth it to try and have more followers than you follow by the short-term approach really isn't acceptable there are Twitter messages you'll see out there saying buy 10,000 followers for $27 these too good to be true and what they do is they create a series of robot or bot accounts which aren't real profiles they just use a string of emails and those followers are absolutely worthless they're not real people behind those accounts and so it's important to use the correct way to build an audience do it without the shortcuts do it in this way managing the process and talking of which let's go back and look at you follow there's a couple more options I'd like to show you which are the filters you can see here on the right the default is no filters but then you can select haven't tweeted in 30 days so the results you've already got from the sort you can further refine it if I select for example using default profile image all of these accounts although it's not very clearly displayed here they do use the egg the standard egg which is a sure five I click on any of these accounts you'll see that there's a surefire sign that they're not very active on social media and certainly not on Twitter okay so logging into Contaxio perhaps once a week just go through for a period of time maybe 20 30 minutes to unfollow all of those you've identified using these sort and filter criteria and what you can also do and this is very valuable is to export some of the information about these accounts into a manageable well, a spreadsheet so if I select data export comma separated file and just open up this file here so a lot of information there but 
if I select the top row and just do a standard Excel filter auto filter that means I can filter by any of these tabs now the relationship matches those ones we've seen it's mutual follows you so let's say we just want to see the ones that follow us back the it's mutuals that we follow and you can see here the following followers of those people and in fact if you total up if I just go down here I mean there's a lot of Excel tidying up you would generally do but let's just stick to the basic principles here we'd go to this total here sum that 10,522,800 followers that's from around 2,000 accounts here so that in itself tells you just how valuable it is to go to the 2000 barrier and beyond because you're increasing rapidly the audience of audience the followers of followers everyone that retweets your message can go a long long way now if we just return to Twitter there are no built-in analytics unlike Facebook pages which have statistics etc so the good news is that there are many freely available tools that can help. I'll give you two examples. One is something called Twitter Counter. We we'll just go to that site. Okay, so I've previously logged in with the Grantham Links account. I'll just show you how it would come up. So if you say your Twitter name, I am. So this is Global Run for Water. You have to authorize the app. This is similar to what we just saw. The first time you do this, you're prompted to see if you want to receive an update, which can be useful. You put in your email address and you'll see how you're progressing week to week. But I'm just going to say, deselect that and say save and go. And in a short moment, it will update with the statistics for this particular account. If I click on it. Yep. So you can see a fairly static because it's been at this following limit. So no real growth there. It even tells you the ranking in terms of the worldwide number of uh, people using Twitter. So four millionth in the world from that figures. Uh, but you can search for any other account. So if I click in this search box, search for my own account. Again, fairly instant, so you can see uh, the following numbers is around 13,000. You can also select a different time period. You can compare against other accounts, which is also useful. Um, let's do that now, actually. And yes, 464,000th in the world. So let's run that comparison. And there it is, the top line against this existing account and again these are the freely available options there's more that you can do professional statistics etc the next one I'm going to show you is something called tweet reach www.tweetreach.com now whereas the other one focused on followers this one looks at your actual tweets and how far your tweet travels so you can type in you don't even have to log into this at all unless you want to actually save a report. But right now we can just look at again that same account, PR Wilson Media, that we just looked at. It asks you to sign in with Twitter. That will sign in with the account I'm currently signed in, which is Rotary Run for Water. So I'll just click authorize to that. And here are the results for PR Wilson Media. 
So it says there 31,000 accounts reached. Well, the actual following is 13,000. So that means it's reached nearly three times that number. And the reason for that is that it's been retweeted. And you can see who's retweeted the most here. You can see this only shows the last 50 tweets for free. Anything else after that is a paid option. But it's extremely useful. You can see who the big contributors are. If you have a particular campaign, which we'll talk about in the final Engage course, like hash Wimbledon would be a great hashtag to see how the last 50 tweets for Wimbledon have reached. You can also search for those rather than just user names. And of course that completely depends on who it is that's tweeting and how big their audience is. And there are lots of tweets going on, there certainly were in the last day or two. So I'll just put in the rotary run for water that we're in and see whether its last 50 tweets reached. It may be that it hasn't got any entries because this only calculates 50 tweets. It, it does. Uh, there's only been three tweets in recent times, however. It's only what's been in the last eight days. And so there we have it. A whole range of things available there on Twitter from finding an audience and building it up using lists and then being able to use this software Contaxio to get past the following limits and on towards measuring the progress so we can see tweet counter and then the reach of tweets with tweet reach. So. Remember these key learning points for growing an audience on Twitter. Use lists and particularly member of because that is your guide to getting the followers you want. Then make full use of freely available software such as Contacts.io to get past these limits. And finally, always think about that wider network out there. Your followers of followers, that 10 million figure for just 2,000 followers and tools like TweetReach and Twitter Counter that will help you measure and realize the full potential. But let's turn our attention now to Facebook and how to grow an audience on there. Now as we've already highlighted in the Configure course, Facebook is quite different in the way that it requires you to first have a personal user account before you can create any public facing presence in the form of a Facebook page. But if we look at the page that we've created here, Grantham Volunteers page in the previous course, you can see at the top right the admin panel, we we'll just click on that, and the two options here. Build audience is appropriate here. Two options, invite email contacts and invite friends at the top. If you select invite email contacts, that can be seen as spam-like behavior if it sends it out to all your friends in your Gmail or whatever other accounts. So stick with invite friends. Now this user account is very new, so it only has one friend. What we're going to do is we're going to invite this account to like the page. Now I'm going to log in as that account and show you what happens and how we make that person an administrator. So I'm logged on as that user account and if I look for a notification there's one here. Peter Wilkins has invited you to like the new page. So simply click like and now I'll log back on as the original user account and make this person an administrator. Here we are again. There's a notification. Paul Wilson likes Grantham volunteers. So we can now go to the home page, to the page itself, and see the likes. Do we say new likes, see all? Here's the button, make admin. So all you need to do is press make admin, type in the password to confirm. There's the person's name, and then click save, and you're asked to confirm the password. 
Okay, so this is typical of what you might do. When, again, I've talked about using the wider network. Paul Wilson has many more friends on Facebook, so by making that person a manager, they can invite their friends. So perhaps you could consider two or three people to be administrators, especially those who are more familiar on Facebook. So we'll stay with this account now, and you can see the notification. As manager, that means if you click on home, you can go to the pages, Grantham volunteers. And here's the option to build the audience. Let's click on admin panel again. Oh, there it is. Build audience, invite friends. Now, you'll see a very different number of friends here. This is anyone that's been in direct contact or in communication recently you know maybe they've liked pages or they've been in touch but then you can select from a whole number of different options you can search all friends which is the whole alphabetical option and essentially any of these that you would like to invite to that page but these are all around the world but you would select the boxes and then click submit much better to zone in on relevant followers so what I would suggest is search by Grantham. These are all the contacts in the town that are Grantham based. So if I select some of these who are members within our club in Rotary Grantham and then click submit. And they will get a little message saying Paul Wilson has invited you to like this page. And this really works well because it's a personal invite that comes through and it encourages people to act just by clicking like. But there are plenty of other ways that you can encourage people to come to your page. What you're trying to get to is 30 likes, which means that you can then see statistics about the traffic, the interactions with your page, who the audience are. Now I'm just going to give you an example. I've just come to the Rotary Club of Grantham page, which is also managed from this account. And look at if you type in the search box here, Rotary Club of, now this could be for any sort of category, and say see more results for, so I click here in pages, you can see a number of Rotary Clubs and the option to like the page, and there's one that's quite local, Rotary Club of Newark, if I click the like, Will be one more to the total. That's a personal like from me. So I could send a message saying, I'm the administrator of Rotary Grantham. Please could you like our page? There is a difference if you like it as the club itself. So if you select use Facebook as Rotary Club of Grantham, do the same search Newark UK. Hopefully it'll identify that. So yes, yeah, so you see it's as if I haven't liked it before. This is because I'm now acting as the club. So if I click like, 293 likes stays at 293 likes. Here we've got a completely different set of messages, which are the new likes for the page. So let's go back to using Facebook as the personal user account, then going to home. And then going to the page and show how those likes are recorded. So personal user accounts appear here by default, but you can also click on pages that like this. And those won't show up in the count and won't be immediately visible. But it's worth communicating with those pages because there's a common interest there. Talking of interest. There's something called interest lists, a much underused feature of Facebook, which is akin to the Twitter lists that we've already talked about. It's something that a personal user adds to his account, but you can then share it on a Facebook page, etc. But it's one of those where the feature is not enabled or visible on this left hand side by default. So what you have to do is click on the star wheel, select help search for interest lists and there's the what are interest lists so you can create your own interest list 
and you go to your interest page and that will bring you up to this particular menu and from this point on any interest list you create will appear down the left hand side as you can see I've already actively used this feature for a number of different groupings these lists in blue are the ones that I've created and these in green are those created by other people that I'm following similar to subscribing to okay let's just walk through the process so we want to create perhaps a interest list of other Rotary Club Facebook pages so I'll type in the criteria Rotary Club of Newark Castle which we Newark UK which we had before and if I click on the drop down I can select add to interest list now it's already in one because it's got a tick box next to it but I could also have it to Rotary worldwide as well so that list is again the filtered view that we've seen before when you go to a particular interest list scrolling down here on the left that one we just created was Rotary we just added it to was Rotary worldwide so you can click on that at any time and see who's actively posting on there so Shelterbox USA Rotaract in China and you can see all the members of the particular list and add anyone at any time if you want to just look for existing lists that might be out there if you just click on add interests and in the top button you just do search for lists here's some suggested examples let's just pick an arbitrary subject uh, volunteers and see who's created an, a list with those titles of lists that people have put together just click on one for example volunteers in Sydney there are six members of the list and no posts in those so it's not widely used as I've said but it's something to consider it's certainly very useful for you to structure how you organize the pages you interact with remember you don't even have to like the pages that you add to a list similar to with Twitter you don't have to follow the people you can just monitor it you can also make these lists private so only you can see them and they wouldn't be publicly displayed in your profile I'd like to show you now event invites because these can be used both from a personal profile page but also from the Facebook pages themselves so let me just demonstrate that on a Facebook page that you manage you'll see status photo video but also offer or event if you click on that offer would be where you're promoting something to encourage people to like your page but event is what we're going to look at here a specific invite to a particular happening that encourages other people to come and see what's happening on your page and like it so click event you type in a name there's some previous examples that come up and you add some details location and the date and the time you can restrict it to stop other people posting other than the administrators better to show you a previous example here's a folk festival event invite that went out so you click on the details this was for a fundraising event there's a description you can update the people who've accepted so basically an invite goes and it'll say are you going maybe or not so the goings are listed here what we can't show you here is as this is a past event the one that's already happened how to invite more friends but if I just click and go back here's an upcoming event I've just created and if I click on that you can select invite friends and this is very reminiscent of the invite people to like the page it works exactly the same way again you can search by people in the Grantham area was it's a summer party locally and invite selected friends from there and then click submit in this case it's save 
and that invite will again appear as a notification message so particularly during the build up to a specific event it's great to get more people to come across to the page they'll find out you can share the links in the invite you can just send messages to people to update them at any time those are the administrators so send guests a message so it's really a great way to keep the audience growing one final thing to link the two subjects together Facebook and Twitter is how you link your Facebook page to a Twitter account so I'm just going to show you this using the Grantham volunteers the brand new page that we created previously and we then go to edit page edit settings and here on the left hand side is something called resources and there's connect with people and under there link your page to Twitter so we can link this to Twitter Grantham volunteers this would link it to the rotary run for water page so just for demonstration purposes I'll show that so I'll authorize that Uh, you can see what messages get updated photos videos and links but I'll just leave everything by default for now and what we'll do is we'll prove as we go back to that page and post a message that it will instantly appear on Twitter so type it in here Twitter test from Anthem volunteers. Just click post. Take a look at the Twitter account. Look at tweets. And there you can see the result Twitter test from Grantham volunteers. So proves that that works. Now delete that message just a demonstration yeah but it's very important to think about your first 140 characters in your message will appear onto the uh, Twitter account and of course not everyone has a Facebook account so you want to get the message as clearly as possible in those first characters to see if they're prepared to click on the link and log into the Facebook account to look at what you're saying it's just a great way to put the message in two places at once and as you find your audience growing you want to be as efficient as possible in getting your message out there so that concludes the overall build training course what we're preparing for now and really you should go away and apply these techniques and build an audience for a couple of weeks at least and then when you're ready it's time to look at how you engage now you have a ready-made interested audience who want to interact what is it that you can do to really make the most of that opportunity to help those people engage with you encourage them to do so to share with their networks and then just continue to grow and get the benefit and what we'll show in the engage course is that you can repeat these principles over and over again whatever the scale of the event and that's very important having got this built audience in place you are well set to engage thanks very much for listening